In a previous video we introduced SCAN, a simple frame in which to make sense of complexity. Now what, what I want to do in this video is to show how you can use it to guide conversations about the decisions you need for a context and or particularly the types of decisions you need for that context. The first quiet one here is that we've got this distinction about how much time we have before we need to take action in the now. And on the other axis we've got a level of uncertainty. Now one of our first descriptions we can put in here is what we might call the inverse Einstein boundary. The classic description that Einstein said is that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. But there's a certain point when we're dealing with inherent uncertainty where there's a transition where the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting the same results. So on one side we have sameness, on the other side we have difference, where we either have, have to do different things to get the same kind of result, or if we do the same things we will get, or may get, a different result. So on one side we've got certainty, or order, and on the other we've got unorder. So we can look at this and say there's a boundary here, a different kinds of decisions going on. As we get closer to the moment of action we run out of time to think. And so there's a boundary we can use here which is that transition from time to think to no time to think left. So that's time to think. And back here we had same different. So in this kind of area when we've got plenty of time to think or remain and we're looking for certainty, for order, we can calculate what's going on. It's often complicated but it's we can make it calculated. By the time we have no time left to think, we need things to be simple. Over here, when we've still got time to think and we're dealing with uncertainty, we're dealing with ambiguity generally. Whereas when com things are completely uncertain and we are dealing with no time to think, we have all we have left is the not known. We need some kind of guidance that can help us, decision making that can help us in something that is not known. So to some extent what we have now is a distinction on one side between truth, which I'll put capitals, uh, sort of quotes around, as opposed to value or usefulness. Is it useful? We don't have time to concern ourselves with whether it's so-called true. So what we typically get here is that these are quantitative whereas these tend to be qualitative. These ones we don't have time for anything other than a binary true-false. And we on the last one we all we have is in the moment and nothing else. Really nothing else at all. So if we can give the kind of descriptions we've got quite different types of decision making. Here we've got things like rules, regulations, things like work instructions where we rotate through a list. Here we have things that are about balance, that things that are trade-offs. We've got multiple factors. We know what the factors are. We calculate what our options are. So we've also got things where they can build up um, in hard systems theory where they will uh, snowball or where they can damp down. We can track those in a quantitative way. Over here we have patterns, we have heuristics, we have recursion, we have things inside things, there are things that are fractal. But we've still got time to think. We're looking very much in terms of qualitative. Whereas down in here, we need ways to shake things up we, or where we're being shaken up. And what guides us most is principles. So if we put that in another way, then what we've got here are rules algorithms, patterns or heuristics, a 
And here we have the one major guidance we have is principles. So you, we can use this kind of frame to help us identify what types of decisions we need and what the support mechanisms we need for them in terms of whether they are dealing with the same or the different in dealing with and also in terms of whether we've got time to think and go back or whether we are committed to action. So there's a simple way to use the scan frame to help guide us in sorting out what types of decisions we need in any given context. Thanks for watching. Do look at the YouTube description for links to further detail. And don't forget to subscribe for other videos and also to support us on Patreon to help us produce these videos and the tools themselves.